One of the biggest bottlenecks that I have when I create these videos is the time it takes to print what tends to be a massive amount of really small parts. Recently Makeblock offered to send me a brand new mCreate printer with a built in laser engraver so I thought I'd make this video talking a little bit about my experience with it in the past week or so. Now my channel is not primarily about 3D printing but I do use a 3D printer a hell of a lot so what this means is I can give you the perspective of someone who prints for functional mechanical applications and someone who actually relies on 3D printing for just about everything I do. So Makeblock's products are primarily aimed at the STEAM education market which is science, technology, engineering, arts and maths. So that's something that I really respect straight away because as someone who went down the pure STEM education route but also as someone who has a sort of artistic side deep down there is a bit of a weird stigma against art in STEM education and I would be really happy to see that go. And so given that Makeblock targets the education industry I decided to design a sort of kid friendly model that's not too difficult to make but it allowed me to test out the printer's performance. Now I should just say that this isn't a sponsored review, I haven't been paid to give my opinion but I do really like this printer and I do like what Makeblock are doing. So what's clear straight away is that this printer is clearly optimised for ease of use and reliability and it comes off as a really sort of premium high-end product. It's got a big build volume, it's got a small layer resolution, it's got some impressive specifications when it comes to the positioning precision, but the first thing that stood out to me more than anything else is that this printer is built like a tank. The entire frame is thick anodized aluminium and it gives it a really premium look and feel and from a practical perspective I am not going to be worried about banging the table while it's printing. There's clearly a ton of attention to detail that's gone into the design of this printer just looking at things like the quality of the touchscreen display, the wire brush that they've added for automatic nozzle cleaning, even the filament holder is thick and sturdy. So once you get into it a little bit more you'll see that it has a lot of ease of use features built in. So one of the things that's been marketed quite heavily is the smart leveling feature. So rather than using a probe which most automatic leveling features use, apparently it uses AI detection technology, which I don't really know what that means, but but I think it might be using the magnets in the print bed. In any case, it's really quick and really accurate. It also has a feature for unloading filament. So using the touchscreen you can tell it to unload the filament that's currently in there and what it'll do is try and extrude as much remaining filament out of the nozzle as it can and also retract the unheated filament out of the top of the extruder. So what this means is that when you change filaments it's really quick and there's not very much mess. It's got a removable and flexible magnetic print bed. I'm not sure if it's actually powder coated but it's got a very rough texture meaning that prints stick extremely well. It actually stuck incredibly well to the point where it was quite difficult to remove some of the prints in ABS, which I find quite amazing since I've always had a really hard time getting ABS to stick to the print bed. It's also got automatic filament detection so it can detect if your filament runs out midway through a print. And it also has some features to be able to resume a print if the power goes out, which could be particularly useful if you're printing something that's gonna take a long time. It seems to me that what the designers had in mind was to try and make a super reliable machine for a sort of classroom or educational setting where a teacher could just start a print and just leave the machine to it and not have to worry about the bed adhesion, not have to worry about the nozzle being clean, not having to watch the filament to make sure it doesn't run out. It seems like overall they wanted to reduce the number of factors you need to worry about when printing just to make it more easy and convenient for people who, who might be juggling lots of different things at once. So in order to test out the printer, um, I designed this simple wind turbine model which gave me the opportunity to test out some different features. It was just a really quick and simple thing that I designed in a few hours. It's loosely based on what a real turbine looks like on the inside and by pointing a fan at it you can make the turbine spin and you can see the gears moving as well. If you want to make it yourself I've got the download pack with the STL files and CAD files in the description. Um, I really wanted to print some gears as that's something that I was excited about when I very first got a 3D printer which was a printer bot simple in plywood um, but I ended up giving up on it as I could never get them really working properly so using a layer height of around 0.1 to 1.5 an extrusion width of 0.2mm on the outer perimeters and ironing enabled in Cura I was extremely pleased with the quality of the gears I managed to print I even managed to produce some tiny little gears in ABS 
um, using the same settings and they came out gorgeous too and the blue gears were there using the supplied PLA sample um, which I'd say was really nice quality. So this kind of proved the dimensional accuracy of the prints which would be expected with such a robust construction um, and I did have to sort of rethink the tolerances I normally use in my designs because whereas normally I anticipate the prints to come out a little bit thicker than my designs these gears were coming out pretty much spot on the dimensions that I specified in Fusion. When it came to the body of the wind turbine design the printer was able to produce some really smooth surfaces um, there's no real Z wobble and really nice consistent layers. I did get a few little artifacts but I had been messing around with the flow settings and the retraction and the temperature um, because I was trying out a few different types of filaments so I can't really blame the printer on that I think it's more my settings. I also tried out printing a few other designs like the shippy model and this honeycomb vase both of which I have a link in the description for and again they printed pretty nice. But one thing I would say is that I might have preferred a slightly bigger cooling fan. As you know I do love a big fat cooling fan and that might have just helped a little bit with overhangs and bridging but I imagine the decision to um, keep the cooling fan quite small was more to do with the target market and wanting to keep the noise down. So I do understand that decision and I do also appreciate how quiet the printer is. The only big design flaw that I experienced with this printer and it is only really when you're getting towards the end of a filament spool um, but filament can get lodged between the frame and the extruder head at the end of a print when the head resets to its home position which quite often snaps it or bends it. Now obviously they could have a sort of guide for the filament but I think maybe the design philosophy with this printer was to keep the number of components as low as possible and without that I don't think you'd be able to get such a premium high-end feeling product at the actually really reasonable price point that it's at. Now as for the laser engraving so the laser itself isn't extremely powerful, which you couldn't really expect it to be because obviously a real laser cutter needs a big enclosure and smoke extraction and all that stuff. But I was really impressed with the performance of the laser on materials like cardboard and wood. The lines that it was able to produce were really clean and tight, which again just goes to show the dimensional accuracy of the printer. I think maybe the laser box software that's used to control the laser engraver is quite basic and, um, and it would be nice to see a few more features in there. In particular you can change the power of the laser, um, the speed at which it engraves and the number of passes, um, but without experience it's hard to know how you would set these and with something like a laser engraver you might only have one chance um, on the material that you want to engrave. So it would be nice to have some sort of guidelines or um, some like presets for different materials. But for simple materials like cardboard, the process is extremely easy. Just load it onto a USB stick, um, put it in the 3D printer and off you go. Now, would I recommend this 3D printer and laser cutter? If you're buying this for a school or another education type setting, I really don't think you'll get a printer this well suited to a classroom environment anywhere near this price range. Um, it's super robust. It works great straight out of the box and it has a lot of ease of use features and I would strongly recommend it. If you're a 3D printing enthusiast, by which I mean um, someone who's into 3D printing because the idea of 3D printing is cool to you, this might not be the printer for you because I'm sure you'd be better off with something open source that you can tweak and upgrade. There's lots of printers out there like that. I would say if you're someone like me, like I'm not really into 3D printing for 3D printing's sake, but um, I'm really into making stuff and 3D printing is an amazing way to make mechanisms and animatronics and all the stuff that I love. So if you are someone like me, then again, then I would actually really recommend this printer because the strengths that it does have are invaluable to me, like the dimensional accuracy and the reliability is really, really valuable to me. And I love that I can just start print off and even if I leave it to its own devices, the failure rate of the prints is extremely low because it, it has this whole setup routine where it cleans the nozzle off and the bed adhesion is so good. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I am very excited to see how my projects are going to go now that I've got this tank of a printer. So a very big thank you to Makeblock for sending me this mCreate 3D printer and also a really big thank you to my patrons and everyone who watches these videos. If you want to buy this printer I have links in the description for both individual buyers and business to business or school buyers um, and there's also some links to find out some more information from the Makeblock product page. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.